Um, so uh, I'm involved with two R25 uh, programs. The R25 series in, at NIH is for training, but it's different than postdoctoral or pre-doctoral training. Uh, not so soon. <laughs> um, and um, the first one, uh, so the R25 I'll talk primarily about is uh, for the Impl Implementation Research Institute IR IRI for Mental Health Services. Um, but there is also another program I will speak about. This is the only R25 currently that I know of that is fully focused on implementation science. Um, there is, however, I remembered this morning, a brand new one that's coming in uh, for cancer. And Ross Bronson from Washington University uh, is leading that, uh, and he's been part of our core faculty. So now there will be one at, from funded by NIMH and one funded by cancer that is an R25 mechanism. And most important of all, it is for the purpose of training researchers to compete for NIH dollars. It's a kind of circular thing. So in other words, the, the outcomes are really, do these people uh, successfully then get research funding to carry out implementation research. It's really building that labor force. Um, there's three papers that were recently pe published in uh, implementation science um, that also shows you that implementation science is an emerging science. It's certainly not fully developed in any, by any means. Um, and so this is the major uh, outlet. Uh, for implementation science uh, from a journal point of view. I put the Canadian one up first because they've been in the business longest about uh, um, knowledge translation is what they call it up there. So there's lots of really good training and experiences and papers that have been published out of the Canadian group. It also is where the EPOC part of the Cochrane Collaborative resides, and this is about that comes the closest to implementation research in terms of um, uh, systematic reviews of implementation strategies, primarily having to do with physical uh, health. Um, Proctor et al. is a paper that we just published in Implementation Science about IR. I'll use some stuff from it, but that is uh, a paper to go to. Meisner et al. is a, the U.S. Training Institute for Dissemination Implementation Research in Health. Is a, it's called TITER, and it's for all health. Uh, that is to say, across all of the institutes, those institutes provide for that. It's certainly another one. The m curriculum and much of the impetus for it actually came out of the IRI at Washington University. Now, uh, what is the IRI? It's located at WashU in St. Louis. It's actually physically located and administratively in a school of public health. Uh, generally the top rated in the country that has had a strong tradition of mental health services research, indicating that implementation research has an integral connection with health services research, in my view. Uh, and uh, it's been funded by NIMH. Uh, we are into, I think, our no-cost extension. We've got four cohorts. We will have trained uh, 41 researchers during that period. Um, and we've had, sub so eight of those slots are paid for by NIMH. The VA bought two slots from the beginning, that's 10. And NIDA came in last year and said, we don't want to go through the expense of uh, creating our own. Uh, can we buy two slots? And so that deal was done. Uh, it also brings in comorbidity and definitely substance abuse. Um, among, I should just say that for this crowd, we have had several applicants, epidemiologists, et cetera, that did successfully go through the research training that had a strong interest in HIV AIDS and was conducting research. Generally, however, uh, it had to do with the mental health aspects of it uh, in, in that sort of way, much less so on the other. Uh, we're currently, okay. There's a new PA out, and we've applied for another five years of funding, uh, but it is uh, quite a different PA from the one that was there before. 
Uh, these are the leadership core faculty. Greg Ahrens is from uh, the center that um, I've run. Uh, he is the be my best implementation research scientist there. Ross Bronson is just extremely well known in public health for dissemination and implementation research. Charles Glisson uh, is an organizational uh, social worker, I guess is what I would call him, who has developed a very good organizational intervention. Brian Mintman, along with um, Eccles, well, Martin Eccles is the one who founded Implementation Science uh, and has been working with the VA. He's now shifted over to do quite a bit in Kaiser. Um, uh, expert faculty, we bring in eight to ten expert faculty each year, different from the year before. Uh, 27 for the first three years. We do this because we consider that training and implementation science has two tasks. One is a typical training task, which is essentially uh, labor force development. Um, but the other one is intellectual capital. So it's, it's really human capital and intellectual capital, largely because it is a, a still forming field of science, both methods, theories, et cetera. Um, and in our view, then, we need to bring in many additional expert faculty who become part of that. The disciplines uh, for the core and expert faculty between 210, medicine 6, psychology 6, social work 4, psychiatry 3, etc. So it's quite a, a range of uh, faculty that we bring in. Electrical engineering, uh, who does a lot of simulation work. Um, the uh, fellows uh, went through the slots. The disciplines there are more truncated. The vast, not vast, but the, the majority of them were psychologists. And we drew in quite a few treatment developers who had sort of done everything they could to develop a treatment. They've been running nine and 10 randomized trials, and they wanted to see if they could get anything out there. Um, and it's an interesting translation for bringing a treatment developer and training them in implementation research. That is not an easy task. Um, so um, here you can see the, the disciplines coming in. It is an annual week, five hard days in, at, in St. Louis, uh, always in the summertime. I couldn't uh, persuade uh, her to put, Enola to put it in, in Oregon. Um, and, but each cohort has two years. So each fellow comes in for two subsequent summers. And the second summer, they actually become part of the training of the first cohort, or the, the first year of the cohort. We did not feel that we could train anybody well enough to compete for funding from NIH and implementation science without a full two years. TITER has one intensive week. They have no mentoring after that week. Um, and um, so it is, uh, it's a broader, more, um, oh, I, I, I would say it, 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 it also takes in uh, a range of people, all of who have, have doctorates or MDs. Um, we made it very clear from the start that we didn't want to train in basic, how do you write an NIH grant? So we have required and only broken that rule, I think, two times, that somebody that applies for us, we will not accept them in unless they've won a K or an RO3 or an RO1. We have had uh, at least two people with multiple RO1s that did not feel they understood what implementation research. One actually came in, multiple RO1s, that was a, uh, a current chair of a review group at NIH. Um, and she stuck out both years, that is to say she came back, so I figured that she was getting some worth from it. Uh, so it's, a, it's an interesting combination of people. TITER does not require that sort of preparatory work, but Enola and I did not want to train on how do you write a basic NIH proposal. We wanted to see that they had gotten that competencies. By the way, we do not do competencies. We thought about it. Uh, Margaret, but and I think the kinds of programs that you have at UCSF here, absolutely, if, if Enola and I were doing that, we would have a list of competencies as well. I like very much that right-hand side. I think they fit beautifully. Um, the courses that we do are very similar. Mentoring, we assign 
each person, each fellow has one core member, so I've got two fellows every <coughs> year that I mentor at a distance plus one local mentor. Uh, very critical. We also require a site visit to a funded federal program in implementation research. Uh, and uh, that's been quite, quite uh, good. Uh, let's see, this is the outcomes. Um, we look at, did they submit grants? Uh, so in the first three years, uh, 74 grants were submitted. Uh, all f um, 52 grants were awarded, 21% ROs, 21% VA projects, really kind of investigator initiative similar to ROs, 11% R34s, uh, 39%, uh, I'm sorry, 8% Ks, uh, and then 39% a range of things including Fogarty, Cates, CDC. HRQ. We count publications. Uh, we're, we're looking at what proportion, fairly high proportion, were about implementation uh, science, uh, 63. The faculty outcomes, um, TITER uh, used and began with the curriculum that we had developed. They have adapted it. They come up, go about their uh, training uh, somewhat different. Um, and there's an edited volume uh, by Bronson Kovitz and Proctor that essentially came out of this work as well. And then finally, um, these are the, some of the selected elements of training. Um, uh, there's a heuristic framework that we published back in 2009. Uh, training challenges, yeah, how do you train in a field that is still developing so dynamically? We really, um, I'm not sure that we do all know what the competencies are or where to put it in schools and, and that sort of thing. Um, how do you do mentoring and support at a distance? We do not feel for our specialized task, which is to prepare people to submit competitive grants to federal agencies, especially NIH, uh, that uh, they, do, they need lots of mentoring about that. Meeting the high demand of training, the last year uh, we had 10 slots to fill and we had the largest number of applicants and we turned several away because they're kind of counseled out, you're not ready yet, come back in another year. Um, and so we had 47 applicants. So that's, uh, that's a fairly high uh, demand and we can't meet that. Um, in the beginning, we securing the agreement of the learning sites uh, was a little tricky and Ola and I did lots of calls and all of that. It's not a problem now, uh, people, because we're known and uh, that sort of thing. The, tra the training and learning sites are good. I think I've included, by the way, in these slides, you'll see things that, uh, Greg Ahrens gave me slides for it, but you can read that. I think that's all I want to say. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.